Now on to the next thing. Um, using moles and all the like. Okay, so this is going to cover empirical formulas, percent composition. <clears throat> so first thing, let's go over empirical formulas and molecular formula and their differences and similarities and differences. So let's look at glucose. Okay, glucose we learned with C6H12O6. Okay, now I've been talking about chemical formulas. Now, this really is not a very specific term because there's a lot of different chemicals. There's molecules and ionic, I mean covalent molecules and ionic. So, okay, uh, so the formula that we have here is called the molecular formula. It represents the exact number and type of element, each element in a substance. So this says the glucose has carbon and exactly six of them, uh, has hydrogen and 12 hydrogen atoms per molecule, and oxygen and six atoms per molecule. Okay, so, so this is called a molecular formula. It's the exact nut type and number of each element. However, when glucose was first discovered, they empirically, which means experimentally, found that uh, glucose was had one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. Or the chemical formula, or what you might say is CH2O. All right, now this is kind of interesting, just to let you know aside. Uh, <clears throat> glucose is a carbohydrate. And how do they get the name carbohydrate? is because of these this thing right here is uh it looks like there's a carbon with water attached to it okay and that's not exactly what it is but that's how you get the name carbohydrate you don't have to know that that's a little sidelight okay um from further study uh they found that this was not the exact relationship uh but was a simple whole number ratio between the elements okay so it's just you might want to call this is this would be the simple or empirical formula. Okay, it was later found that glucose is C6H12O6, just like up here, which is exactly the amount of each element. And you can see that this is a multiple of this guy right here. So it's six of these. Okay. So CH2O is called the empirical or simple formula, and I'll just sometimes I'll just call it EF of glucose, and it's a simple whole number ratio, while C6H12O6 is known as the molecular formula, which is the exact number. And Okay, usually when we try to find the molecular formula of a covalent molecule, and that's key here, we will find the empirical formula first, and then use further information to find the molecular formula. And we'll be doing um, problems related to that. Sometimes the empirical formula and the molecular formula are different, as it was in glucose, but that's not always the case. For instance, water is H2O, the molecular form is H2O, and so is the empirical formula. And here's some other examples. Ammonia is NH3, the molecular formula is NH3, and so you can see the same. Hexase empirical formula is C3. 3H7, the molecular formula is C6H14. So the molecular formula actually is two of the empirical formulas. And we'll, we'll see how this relates and how we can, I mean, we'll see problems that relates to this. Pentane is uh, C5H12, the empirical formula, and so is the molecular formula. Hydrogen peroxide, the molecular form is H2O2, we learned that. The empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio, HO. And carbon dioxide is CO2, the molecular formula, and it's also the smallest whole number ratio, uh, CO2, which is the empirical formula. And we'll be looking at both of these and how to work the molecular formula from the empirical formula. So this is just to uh, 
let you know that there are two kinds of formulas that we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at a molecular formula, which is the exact number and type, and empirical formula, which is the relative uh, number of the types of elements in a molecule. Ionic compounds, on the other hand, is always, almost, a, a simple whole number ratio. Uh, when we figure out the chemical formula for ionic compounds, we ensure this, okay? So for instance, iron three oxide is Fe3 plus O2 minus and then crisscross the charges. And then you get, there's two Fe's for every three O. And that's the smallest whole number ratio. Uh, if you look at uh, calcium oxide, Ca2 plus O2 minus, Remember I said don't do the cross, crisscross if the charges are the same numbers. And um, so here's the simple whole number ratio. Okay, so for ionic compounds, the empirical formula, and I guess you could say the molecular formula are the same. But that's not the case for covalent. Okay, they can be same or different. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at something new called percent composition of mass by mass. So chemical formulas, either empirical or um, usually empirical, but you could also look at molecular formulas, give a ratio of the amount of elements to one another. However, it does not give the mass ratio. That is what is the ratio of the masses of the elements to one another. So let's look at water. This says the uh, empirical formula, molecular formula says there's a ratio of two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. But this is not the mass ratio. Okay, that's because hydrogen weighs one AMU per atom and oxygen is 16 AMUs per atom. So even though there are two atoms in water, by mass, water is much more oxygen because it's heavier, okay? Right, so one with, so you have oxygen here and then two little hydrogens attached to it, okay? So you have one, 16, and one. <clears throat> okay, so what we want to do is find out what is the percent composition by mass of each one of the elements in a water. So the first thing you do is you find a, a molecular mass of water, and that's easy to do. Each hydrogen weighs one AMU. So multiply that by two. So we have one and two. So there's two, two AMUs from the hydrogen. One oxygen weighs 16. So uh, the mass due to the oxygen is 16. And the total mass of water is 18 AMUs. Then to figure out the percent composition, you simply take uh, the two, the mass of the hydrogen, two divided by 18, change the percent, multiply it by 100, you get 11. That 11% of the um, percent composition, the percent composition by mass of hydrogen is 11%, and almost 90%, 89% of the mass of water is oxygen. Okay, you can, you can see that up here. This guy is way bigger, it's like a nine to one ratio, okay. All right, so um, here's another example. Let's say carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is CO2. All right, forgot to write that down. So one carbon, uh, how much does it weigh? 12 AMU. So the mass due to carbon and carbon dioxide is 12 AMU. Oxygen is two. Oxygen atom, each one is 16, so it's 32. So the mass of oxygen and carbon dioxide is 32. So, so you got something like this. So the carbon and two oxygens. So most of the mass comes from the oxygen. So what is the percent? Okay, so the total mass is 44 AMU, it's 12 plus 32. So the total mass, this is the percent mass of the carbon is 12 divided by 44. And the oxygen is 32 divided by 44. So 27.2% uh, 
carbon and 72.8% oxygen. Okay, uh, just to let you know, we could have used molar mass instead of uh, atomic mass units, okay? So if you did, you simply could have used, you could have gone two moles of hydrogen times one gram per mole. And the mass of one, uh, so one mole of water, uh, two grams of it, I mean, um, one mole of it is going to be two grams of hydrogen. Uh, there are one mole of oxygen in water. Uh, so it weighs 16 grams, so the mass of the oxygen in water, one mole of water, 16 grams. Okay, so the total mass, and this is the molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. Okay, so the oxygen, the hydrogen takes up two grams of that. So two grams per 18 grams times 100 is 11%. And for oxygen, it's 16 grams divided by 18. So we'll probably use this method. We'll probably use molar mass more than we will AMUs, but it doesn't matter. It'll give you the same, um, same answer. Next thing is finding the empirical formula from percent composition. Okay, so now, now what we want to do is it's if I give you percent composition, so what is the mass of each substance, you can figure out the empirical formula. Okay, now it's impossible to just, it's so I say it's impossible, so you just, so if somebody gives you you just can't find the empirical formula by hey, somebody gives you a sample and says, hey, count how many hydrogens are in the sample, how many uh, carbons. We can't do that because remember, these things are too small and too many. But we have, remember, we have a relationship between mass and amount, and that's called the mole. <clears throat> so we're going to use, use the mole, molar mass, to help us figure out this relationship okay for instance let's say I have 82.3 percent by mass nitrogen and 17.7 percent hydrogen by mass okay we can rewrite these percents as masses and so the way to do that as you know that these two numbers add up to 100, so what you can do is kind of assume that you have a 100 gram sample, and that 82.3 grams of it is nitrogen, and 17.7 .7 grams of it is um, hydrogen. So whenever I see a percent, and I know a percent mass, I just automatically replace the percent with grams <clears throat> okay so now we have grams 82.3 uh, nitrogen and 17.7 .7 grams hydrogen so the next thing we need to do is find out how many moles that is so um, so what you have to do is figure out how many moles 82.3 grams is and you have you have different ways of doing it and I go through them here you can use uh, you can use ratio, you can use grouping where you take 82.3 grams, divide a group up into groups of 14, or you can do dimensional analysis, 82.3 times the conversion factor, and it really doesn't matter. You end up getting the right uh, 5.88 moles of nitrogen. As for the hydrogen, you can do a similar. So you can use the ratio, grouping, or dimensional analysis, it doesn't matter what you use. And I'll have a, actually I have a simpler method uh, to do the quicker method to do these calculations in a few minutes. But you get 17.7 .7 moles of nitrogen. So we're almost there. We have a ratio of 17.7 .7 moles hydrogen to 5.88 moles of nitrogen. And if you look at these, these are not whole numbers. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to get whole numbers because that's what an empirical formula is. Now, the first inclination might be just to round up or round down the nearest whole numbers. And when you do that, you get 18 moles of hydrogen and 6 moles of nitrogen. 
which is 18 to 6, and then 18 hydrogens to 6 nitrogens, and you can see you uh, divide both by um, 6, you can get 3 hydrogens here, 3 hydrogens for every 1 nitrogen, or N1H3 or NH3. It turns out that that's actually the answer, okay? That's good. But, you know, rounding up and rounding down is not really a safe thing to do because uh, some of the numbers aren't so easy, especially if you have more than two elements, okay? So I have another trick that we can use to, to, uh, to come up with the empirical formula. Okay, so the smallest value is 5.88. And what you do is divide both of the values by that number. And when you do that, you get 3.01 hydrogens and 1.00 nitrogens. And you can see the ratio is again NH3. Now, here's the thing, okay? Um, what you want to do when you come up with these calculations is it's, you know, you usually want to get a number that's close to a whole number, right? Most of the times you won't get exactly. Sometimes you get like 2.95, okay? And you might go, oh, is that close enough? Yeah, so it's it's kind of thing where, you know, there's no cut and dried way to figure out. But, you know, if you came up with 2.91 or 90, hydrogens I would be a little bit worried about that and might go back and recheck it okay so you want it to be pretty close like nine five nine six nine seven whatever but you know there's a point where you just got to decide and it's also your answer usually is an answer that makes sense okay I mean if you were to end up with a, something like n 17 h 47 huh all right that's just weird okay usually we get something that makes sense so look for an answer that makes sense so here's another example all right um so you're given 60 grams sample and you find that 38.3 grams of lead, 17.83 grams of carbon, and 3.74 grams of hydrogen. So what is the empirical formula and the percent composition? Okay, the percent composition by mass is kind of simple. You just, the total mass is 60, and you can figure out and lead is 38.43. You can do that for each one of them, and you get the percent composition for each of them, okay? And then what you can do with each one of these is you can divide these by the, um, you can figure out the uh, moles of each one of these and then figure out the empirical formula. But there's an easier way to do that, all right? And that's simply to take these numbers here and divide them by their molar masses, okay? Now, here's where I am going to be make things simple. Instead of having ratio, dimensional analysis, and grouping, I'm just going to make it simple because it's, you just got to know this, all right? It's, it's simple to do this. Um, is that whenever you go from moles to mass, you'll divide. So I'm not going to go through methods anymore. I'm just going to say, uh, if you have a mass and you want to find a moles, you're going to divide. Okay, so, and it works because what you're doing is you're dividing the mass up into um, into moles, okay? So, uh, so you take each one, lead, 38.43 divided by its molar mass, and you come up with this. Do that with the carbon, do that with the hydrogen. So the amount of moles. Okay, and then what we do is you take the smallest amount, 0.185 and divide each one by that amount and then you get numbers there these are, and these are rounded okay to the nearest whole number you get one mole lead eight moles carbon 20 moles hydrogen and so the empirical formula 
is PBC8H20. Okay. All right, here's another one. Um, so you have 63.5% uh, is silver by mass, 8.2% uh, nitrogen by mass, and the rest is oxygen. So what is? So we need to find out how much of this is oxygen, and that's simple. So it's 100, 100 subtract silver, and the nitrogen, you get 28.3 oxygen. Again, um, so percent isn't a mass, okay? It's a ratio. It says that there's 28.3 grams per every 100 grams. So what you can do is just replace the percent with grams, I told you. So this becomes 63.5. And you divide it by a smaller mass. And I'm rounding it. Okay. All right. And you end up with these numbers. And divide by the smallest number, which is 0.586, each one. And then you get 1 Ag, 1 N, and O3. H, Ag, and O3. Okay, um, so notice that the last two examples, this one and the previous one, both have a metal in them and they're ionic compounds. So these are the empirical formulas and the molecular formulas, okay? They don't have, so we really don't usually say that you know, ionic compounds have molecular formulas. They just have empirical formulas. Uh, also, like on the last one I told you about ammonia, usually the answer should kind of make sense. Okay, this is something you recognize. This is silver nitrate, okay? Okay, so if the answer looks familiar, probably right, at least for us. We're not discovering new any, any new uh, samples. Okay, now what we're going to do is find a molecular formula. Okay, like um, C6H12O6. I want to find that. Okay, and there's going to be uh, two ways to do that. One is to take the empirical formula, uh, have the empirical formula and the molar mass. And the other way is to take... Um, given mass of a substance and a molar mass. In both cases, you need the molar mass. Right, so the first one we're going to do is find a molecular formula using the empirical formula and the molecular formula. And so here's the empirical formula, it's just giving you to you, and the molar mass is here. And what we then want to do is find um, the formula, formula mass. Okay, the formula mass is the molar mass, and sometimes it's called formula weight, is the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay, so how much this this thing here weigh? So uh, there's one oxygen, 16, one carbon, 12, one nitrogen, 14, and chlorine, I'm rounding it to 35.6. Okay. When you add those all up, you get 87.6 grams. It is the formula mass or weight of this empirical formula. Okay, now what you do is you compare this mass to the molar mass. And what you want to do is find out how many formula masses are found in one molar mass. All right. So, so you take the molar mass and you divide it up by uh, the empirical formula, um, formula weight, and you get three. So there's three formulas, three formula weights in every one molar mass. That means there are three empirical formulas in every molecular formula. So what you do is you take this formula right here and multiply it by three, and you get this. And if you want to check your answer, you just uh, find out how much this weighs, and it should be this value here, or real close to it. So it'll be 3 times 48, 3 times 12, 
plus 3 times 14 plus 3 times 35.6 and that should be really close to this number here okay sometimes the empirical I um, mean the uh, formula mass and the empirical um, and the uh, molar mass is the same and so you, you don't have to change the uh, the formula at all okay uh, now so that was going from empirical formula and molar mass now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the molecular formula from the mass okay there's going to be two different ways we can get mass and molar mass so the first type is if I'm given a percent composition and molar mass I want to find a molecular formula so I'm given I have a sample of 74 uh, percent carbon 8.7 percent hydrogen 17.3 hydrogen and the molar mass is 162.1 grams so the first thing is find your empirical formula okay so in the last set of problem you already had the empirical formula so you uh, divide each one of them by their uh, respective molar masses okay and you get these values here and then to figure out the ratio of the whole number ratio is divide each one by the uh, lowest whole number I mean the whole lowest value 1.24 and when you do that you get five moles carbon seven moles of hydrogen and one mole of nitrogen okay so that's the empirical formula okay, the next step is to find the formula weight or mass so the, uh, so 60 grams from the carbon 5 times 12 uh, 7 grams from the hydrogen 7 times 1 and 14 grams from the nitrogen 1 times 14 so the total mass the formula mass or weight is 82 grams well how many formula masses can fit into a molar mass so you take 162 and divide it by 80 81 there should be a 1 here 81 okay and you get two so there are two formula masses per every molar mass that means there are two empirical formulas for every molecular formula and you multiply it by two okay and the last one is again mass the molar mass so this one here it's not percent um, composition you, what you're doing is you're given a sample so this sample is 3.585 grams and it's made out of 1.388 grams carbon 0.3445 grams hydrogen 1.85 grams hydrogen and the molar mass is 62 grams so the first thing we need to do so we want to find a molecular formula so the first thing we do is find the empirical formula so we divide each one by their molar masses and that's what we do here and divide by the smallest number 0.16 and you get this this and this so you get a ratio of one carbon to three hydrogens to one oxygen so that's the empirical formula okay and the formula mass then is 31 which is uh, 12 plus 3 plus 16 equals 31 then you want to do is find out how many formula masses are in the molar mass so you divide the molar mass by the formula mass come up with two so there are two formula masses for every molar mass so that means there are two empirical formulas for every molecular formula so you multiply this by two so you get c2h6o2 okay finally all right here you go so um there we're going to be a there's a worksheet that's going out and in the worksheet will have basically two parts the first part is um based on the last powerpoint the mo moles okay where you'll be given um you'll have to go from mass to moles to atoms and and so forth all right and the second part 
of that problem set will go over what this this PowerPoint has to do with. Now there will be another PowerPoint that goes over um, finding uh, chemical formula, I mean molecular formula, empirical formulas using combustion analysis. Uh, and uh, that's kind of special. Um, and I'm not really sure how much you're going to have to be responsible for it, but it's typically it's covered in this this course, and so I want to go over that, and I'll do that on uh, next PowerPoint. Okay, all right. So hopefully all this will prepare you for um, that worksheet. Okay, uh, and uh, the test. Well, yeah, the test that will, uh, or the quiz that will um, follow that.